Here are the three core playing styles that you need to know as a handpan player. Those three styles are one, hand-to-hand -hand technique, two, autopilot technique, and three, open technique. Let's dive right in. All right, here is a rev vest in the B-Ruz scale. And as you might already know, a hand-to-hand -hand technique means that we just play one hand after the other. We're gonna stick to the same groove throughout all of these examples, and the groove looks like this. So notice that all of the accents are landing on my right hand. Doom, gap, doom, doom, gap, doom, gap, doom, doom, gap. But in between, I'm adding all of these ghost notes. I'm acknowledging the spaces in between those strikes, right? I'm kind of counting the beat divisions, if you like. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E. gives me room to do is to start to add melody in those spaces so I can basically just move those ghost notes around. Right? But I should really be more selective about how I do that because that just sounded like a load of random notes. So the way that we can do that is to keep hold of a load of those ghost notes, but just start to intersperse bits of melody here and there. for is percussive playing. Now that I've got all of those ghost notes in place, I can choose when to make some of them a little bit louder, a little bit quieter, use them to support the main accents within the groove so that it makes that groove a little bit more interesting. demonstrated on this rev vast here. All right, let's jump over to a different instrument where we'll explore autopilot technique. So here we have the G Akibono from Panart Hang, and we're gonna play the groove just with one hand. As you noticed before, all of the accents happened to be landing on the right hand, which is great for this exercise. It makes it a little bit easier. So we're gonna do just that. We'll eliminate all of the ghost notes. play the main skeleton of the groove with our right hand. And we call this the autopilot technique because as I'm demonstrating now, the idea is that with a repeating pattern like this groove, our hand just eventually knows what to do without having to think about it. So that gives our brain, oops, and our other hand space to do whatever we want, right? So I can talk over the top easily or I can play. practice this is to take the groove and then practice moving the other hand up and down in scales. swapping their hands around, right? I really love this technique because again, it gives you so much room to just do whatever you want. And especially when you start to combine the hand-to-hand -hand method and the autopilot method, then you've got a whole world of possibilities open to you. All of these three techniques really need to work in harmony with each other in order to really open up your playing. 
Speaking of opening up your playing, let's explore the open technique. And to do that, I'm gonna demonstrate with one of my pieces over on the D curd instrument. So this is a stainless steel D curd from Meridian Handpans. And the piece that I'm gonna demonstrate this on is called Orbit. If you're interested in learning the full piece, then you can find it on my course, Express and Create, which is available at handpandojo.com. Uh, but it looks like this. is that rather than in the autopilot technique where one hand is doing one job and one hand is doing the other, we're actually swapping roles so that we can keep this open position. Hence the title, open technique. The reason I used it in this composition is because I wanted to keep my playing as comfortable as possible within this melody that's actually quite uh, complex. There's a lot going on, there's a lot of moving happening. It would be really difficult to achieve this with the autopilot technique. It would take a lot of hard work and my left hand would get exhausted. <laughs> How does it go? I haven't even practiced it before, so I don't know exactly what the patterns will be. Uh, but yeah, one hand is gonna get tired quicker than the other hand. Whereas if I share the jobs, then I'm gonna be able to play for longer. It also means I'm not gonna fall over myself and get tangled, my shoulders aren't gonna round, I can stay in a really nice posture. And again, it just inspires slightly different melody um, composing than the other te two techniques would do. And the reason I chose not to use hand-to-hand -hand technique as well is because I didn't really want to crowd it with all of these other percussive elements. That's not the goal with this piece. This piece is a pulse, a driving pulse, and an interesting melody. And keeping those two simple elements is what gives it uh, the feel that it's got, is what gives it the character that it has. So to practice this technique, really you need to pull apart the little um, sections of the piece that you're writing or improvising or learning, whatever it is, and analyze it. Figure out which hand needs to be where in order to maintain this shape and move really, really slowly. That's how I did this. Okay, in order to hit this note and play the ding at the same time, I don't wanna do this. You know, I started figuring out how my hands need to move and then just practiced those little sections. I zoned in on small sections and repeated those over and over again. Just got used to the mechanics of it. If you want to kickstart your practice in one of these techniques, then I recommend this video next. And if you want to learn my piece Orbit, then you can do so in my course Express and Create on the Hempan Dojo. Uh, but yeah, wishing you a wonderful week and I'll see you soon.